Gurleen. I'm a, yeah, thanks. I'm a tutor by profession and a cyclist at heart. I don't know whether you can say tell right now or not, but I'm damn nervous. Public speaking is just not my cup of tea. Uh, but I decided to do this today and step out of my comfort zone because I feel that if I could somehow uh, motivate just even one person today to go back and think hard about that one thing or that one passion that would make their heart beat faster, I think this discomfort of mine would be totally worth it. So um, before I start, I would like to know by just a show of hands maybe, uh, how many of you here dare to dream? All right, that's a quite, lot, quite a lot. So how many of you actually go ahead and do something about it? That's like half of the hands and half of the hands have gone down, just as I had expected. So what is it? The question actually here is, what is it that prevents us from pursuing our own dreams? Is it because when we grow up, we tend to stop believing in the magic of our own dreams? Is it because we start believing more in what others, the so-called successful ones, tell us? What constitutes success and ultimately happiness? Uh, fat bank balance? Uh, maybe a big car? Bigger house? Designer clothes? Well, I basically am here to tell you, especially the young generation out here, that it's all crap. Yeah, it really is. My speech basically was supposed to, it was intended towards females, basically. I do see a lot of females here and young generation. So it, I think I might be able to motivate somebody today. Uh, as females, we basically tend to give up on our dreams, post-marriage and uh, after having kids. We try and fit our, in, ourselves into molds and expectations of others. We are expected to sacrifice. We are expected to put the wants and needs of others above ours. We are never taught uh, how to say no, which is a big thing. We live with our fears. We fear being judged. We fear uh, being made fun of. We fear failure. And so we, we keep our despair and our depression hidden from others. After all, it's not something we should talk about, right? But then, how do you plan to spread happiness around yourself, you know, to your kids and your families, if you yourself are not happy inside? OK, so I have not always been like this. Uh, there is a story to me. Obviously, I wasn't this confident. I still am not, at least not on stage. You give me a bicycle, I can go cycle 600 kilometers. Yeah, <laughs> I've done that. So I wasn't always like this. I'll give you an idea as to who I was or am. Growing up as a child, I was very carefree. I was, uh, I, I was very inquisitive. I used to spend hours on the terrace looking at the night sky through my binoculars, hoping to spot an, a UFO someday. I really believed in it, and I still do. Oh, there's always a possibility. Yeah. Um, I was always a tomboy. Climbing trees appealed more to me than playing with dolls. Um, I had this, uh, I was very overprotective about animals. And so my family was very used to having frequent house guests in the form of various shapes and sizes of animals, shivering puppies, and even abandoned baby mice. I have really taken care of abandoned baby mice, though I, did, I think I did kill them by feeding them too much milk. So, um, and yeah, I could really keep myself occupied for hours without getting bored. Uh, my summer holidays, usually, usually the summers, uh, the afternoons, used to be spent under the blazing sky under the blazing sun, uh, digging in my mother's uh, home, you know, the, the flower beds, looking for worms and insects of all kinds. And I used to note down their details, make a colored sketch too. So I was a very carefree child that way. Uh, I was also always a fitness freak. I loved testing myself physically as well as mentally. And uh, 
I love doing things which are a bit hutke. And maybe that is the reason I was always into sports. Uh, my very idea of fun is getting dirty, sweaty, and so bone tired at the end of it that you can't even possibly raise a finger. So uh, I was always into sports, as I told you. During school, I was into athletics, I was into basketball, I was into karate, and I was into gymnastics. So you, you put me into any sport, I used to excel at that because I have this innate nature of becoming a kida of whatever I do. If I have to do something, it, I have to give it 100%, otherwise I don't get into it. So that's how it was. So I've had this very carefree childhood. I guess that was because of my parents, all thanks to them, because they never imposed their beliefs on us, on their kids. So we were very free to make our own mistakes and learn from them. I guess I'm also one such parent. Uh, I'll just give you an incident because we do have many students here. My daughter joined, uh, she wanted to be an animal doctor. That's what she thought she wanted to be. So she joined uh, veterinary sciences at uh, uh, Rajasthan. And then all of a sudden she decided after the half semester, uh, the very first semester, that uh, she want, she, that's not what she wanted. She wanted to become an uh, animal behaviorist and trainer. Now just imagine what the relatives and what my parents and you know others, their reaction when I told them this is what she is going to do. And we supported her wholeheartedly. Right now she is very happy doing what she is doing because she followed her heart. And that's what I want all students out here to do. You know, you should really think hard. Is this what you really want? So I was like this, a very careful childhood, you know, and a fun-loving kind and doing various stuff. So I was like this when I met my husband, Kamal, and I got married in the first year itself. By the time I was 20, I was already a mom. So what the next 20 years or so, I did what was expected of me. And I was doing it very happily, actually. I was content looking after my family. I was, uh, you know, playing the various roles that, uh, that women normally do, uh, that of a mother, a wife, a daughter-in-law. It wasn't easy for me because I was a kid myself at that time. And it was a humongous change for me when, after I got married because I came from a very liberal family into one that was a bit orthodox. Also, we uh, were very different as individuals because of our, uh, the stark differences in our upbringing. So somewhere along the way, I lost myself. I went into depression. And I was able to hide it for a while uh, from everybody out there behind a big smile of mine. And to some extent, I was hiding it from my own self too. But then, uh, somehow you do feel that something is missing. So I had this feeling in the pit of my stomach that this is now how it should be. That I have to be something else. There has to be something else in life. At that time, I was eating all I could, you know, put my hands on. Anything and everything in sight. I was in fact having, uh, I was having dinner twice. I was gaining weight. I'll show you. Uh, this is not the, I was like, I must have been 70 something there. So I was gaining weight and under that exterior was a void. I then consciously, during this very low phase, I very consciously made an effort to do something, engage myself into something positive. So I enrolled back in my karate classes. And uh, because of my hard work, and that's how I am, uh, I was able to get my second dan black belt after a period of, I think, one and a half years. During this period, thank you so much. <laughs> During this period, I also got the opportunity to train Delhi Police personnel at Police Training College, Harodakala. That experience was very fulfilling and it did bring back some of the confidence that I had lost during all those years. But still, it was not enough. And then came this opportunity uh, where I applied for Mission Udan. I saw this ad in the Times of India. No, Mission Udan happened first. I'm sorry. So many things I did, right? I get confused. So uh, I saw this uh, advertisement on National Geographic Channel about Mission Uran, and I applied immediately. Uh, that was basically a documentary reality show by the Indian Air Force and the National Geographic Channel, where they wanted to select civilians and show what Air Force is all about through civilian eyes. So 60,000 people applied, 
and only five civilians were selected and I was one of them. So while uh, uh, during this period, we were with the Indian Air Force for one and a half months and we not only got to observe the life of the Indian Air Force personnel but also live it. We were taken to the Air Force uh, Academy where we lived the life of a cadet over there for seven days. They were very hard. It's a very strict schedule to follow. And I'll just tell you a funny incident. Uh, when I entered, we, we, we thought we were like celebrities and we'll just be observing the lives and not doing anything else. So as soon as we entered, I gave a big smile, as I usually do, uh, to the senior who was standing there. And he said, what are you smiling at? And I said, I'm very happy to be here, sir. And he told me to take 10 rounds. Yeah, and I left my bag and he said, no, with the bag. So I had to do that. It was very interesting. Even though this was a lifetime achievement thing, anybody would agree to that, right? Because civilians don't get to see the inside of an Air Force base. And I was, we were taken to all of them, all across the country, even Siachen. Even this somehow failed to complete me. There was always something missing. I knew this wasn't my calling. And then uh, there were certain major financial and personal issues that again draw me back into that dark well of depression. I just wanted to run away from everything. I wanted to, I really wanted an escape. So during this period, I saw this advertisement one day uh, in June 2014 with the time, uh, it was cycling from Manali to live with the Times of India. And something clicked and I applied. I did not ask anybody, I just applied. I remember I spoke to my sister over the phone and I asked her, what do you think of this? She did not know at that time that I had already applied and she said, seems suicidal. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Actually, she knew I was gaining weight. I wasn't physically active at that time. So she knew, I, I, how could I possibly you know, do it maybe? So I applied. I got selected maybe because of my sports background and because of the fact that I was selected by the Indian Air Force Formation Udan. I got selected. I was the only bloody non-cyclist in the group of 17 who were selected. I had no clue about mountain bikes. I did not even know I needed a geared bicycle for that. So I was practicing. We were given a practice schedule and I kept on practicing on my non-geared 35 kgs Hercules. Normally what we have, the cycles that we normally use are somewhere around 13 kgs. So one fine day, obviously after the practice, I could not walk because my thighs were like on gone because I was not doing it correctly. I didn't have a geared bike. So I called up our mentor, Mr. Rajesh Kalra, who was selecting us. And I told him, sir, I, I'll not be able to you know, participate in the practice tomorrow. And uh, he was like, he very casually asked, uh, what gear ratio are you using, Gurleen? And I was like, gears? What gears? And that's, thank God that discussion happened because we were able to arrange a second-hand uh, MTV geared one for me just before we left. So the very first ride from Manali to Madi, I don't know whether you've been there or not, but it is like 34 kilometers all uphill. And for somebody who had not practiced on a geared bicycle, it was humongous. It was a torture. Though I was given the option to sit in the support vehicle, I decided to carry on. At maybe even though I was at my own snail pace, but I wanted to do it because giving up has somehow uh, never been an option for me. And I forgot to change this. This was Mission Uran. This was when we were, uh, I was navigating in the Chetak helicopter. And this was after we came back from Leh. Now that's cycling and I'm racing there. So that ride itself was so difficult for me because I did not know anything about the gears. And I was given the option, but I did not sit. Reason being, giving up has never been an option in my head, ever, ever. So, and maybe I get it from my mom, who faced uh, leukemia till the very last day, she did not give up. She was always very careful about her medication and things that are supposed to be done. So I think I take that from her. And I'm very thankful to, for that. So once I reached the campsite, uh, everybody gave me a standing ovation. 
even though I had come hours later, they, everybody had had their lunch, everybody had had a bath, and there I was, in my sweaty clothes. When I got that standing ovation and Mr. Rajesh Kagra stood up and told me that uh, had it been anybody else from his own cycling group, that person would have given up hours earlier because he could see how ex excruciatingly painful it was for me because of the cramps. And to be very honest, that was the moment I realized that I was somebody, someone more than I thought I was. And that was the day I rediscovered myself. And uh, so that was the day and uh, since then there has been no looking back. I've been participating in races and surprisingly winning podiums too. It was to my utter surprise because even I didn't know that I was good. And uh, yeah, so you must be wondering why I'm, you know, why I'm telling you all this. I'm telling you all this because I really want, especially the ladies out there, to understand that it is never too late to do what you want to do, to be who you want to be, to follow your own dreams. And I was 33 when I got selected for Mission Uran. I had two kids. The others were college students who got selected. I picked up the bicycle just five years back. And I'm winning, winning podiums, you know. And I'm racing against girls less than half my age. And let me tell you, I give them a very stiff competition even now. So it's not about age. It's not about your circumstances. And it's not about, definitely not about, how much spare time or money you have. I've had, actually, I've honestly had happier days when my pockets were empty. I was happier. It is basically about being true to yourself. It is basically about finding something that you really love and sticking to it with all your guts. Somehow everything else falls into place. So I hope after going back today, that's me. See, I look so happy cycling. <laughs> so I really hope once you go back today, you think hard about what is it that you really want. Is it an engineering degree? I'm sorry, sir. Uh, or is it something else that you want? You can always, you know, follow your passion alongside. Obviously, education is important too. Uh, maybe you can pick up that old, that pen again and start writing again. Or pick up those wet towels from your bicycle and clean it and start writing that. Or that old guitar. I don't know what your passion is, where it stays. But do that. Do something that makes you feel alive again. I found my wings. I really did actually. See, I'm flying. I found my wings in the two wheels of a bicycle. I hope you find yours too in something. Thank you. Thank you.